Hey, it's Mir Desi, the Ingredient Guru. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that I am a huge fan of lacto-fermented foods because they are just so great for your gut and they are a truly healthy food. We do not have enough lacto-fermented foods in our modern diet. So I wanted to bring in my dear friend and colleague, Hannah Crum, to talk to us about why kombucha and other things are great. So I'm gonna start by telling you a little bit about her and then we're just gonna dive in. Hannah Crum is known as the Kombucha Mama and she pioneered Kombucha Camp, which is an educational workshop in 2004 out of her small Los Angeles kitchen. Along with her husband, Alex Ligori, they created the top educational site with a mission to change the world one gut at a time by providing quality information, cultures, and customer support. Through Kombucha Camp's videos, blog posts, online support communities, and award-winning Amazon bestseller, The Big Bucha, Book of Kombucha. And folks, you have to get this book. I have it. It's like the Bible of Kombucha. You have to get it. And there it is on her screen. Um, they serve as mentors and the leading experts in kombucha to millions of kombucha, lo kombucha lovers from all corners of the earth. A popular speaker about kombucha fermentation and bacterio sapiens, Hannah frequently tours and can be found speaking at corporate and health conferences, fermentation festivals, and events throughout the US and abroad. As an extension of Hannah and Alex's mission, they also co-founded Kombucha Brewers International in 2014 to unite and advocate for the commercial kombucha bottling industry worldwide. Wow, that's amazing. You are just the goddess of kombucha. <laughs> Thank you. I always appreciate it when other people say that. I'd like to say I'm the ambassador. Kombucha chose me because she knew I would defend her true essence. So um, I'm just grateful I get to serve such an amazing culture. Well, and, and it's great. I'm so glad that you're here because I do literally talk to people all the time about adding lactoferments. And first of all, if it's not something that's part of your your home culture, it can feel like a little weird, like what, I'm going to grow this thing? Like, what is that? And then the other thing is people are very worried. They're like, what if I do it wrong? And I'm like, it's really hard to do it wrong. So, <laughs> so I'd love it if you would talk to us, first of all, you know, just explaining the process of what is a SCOBY, how kombucha works. I'd be delighted to. Yeah. So for those who don't know, kombucha is fermented tea. And we're different from lacto-ferments in that we're an acetic acid ferment. And so that term might be familiar if you're someone who likes to purchase raw apple cider vinegar. We're essentially an easy drinking tea vinegar. And so we have a little bit of a sweet sour punch, depending on how tangy you like yours, you can ferment it longer if you like more of the punch and um, less of the sweet. Uh, but it's a probiotic beverage it also creates healthy acids that support healthy liver function. Mm -hmm. And so not only do we have the good guys putting, um, you know, out competing the bad guys in our gut, we also have these acids that help support our liver so that we can function properly. And then we're getting nutrients in a living form from the yeast so that we have energy. And of course, those acids are going to help with digestion and just helping to balance out the pH of the gut, which we really do need more on that acidic side. Um, and so it does a whole bunch of great things for folks. And one of the things I love about kombucha is I feel like it's a gateway in, not an end point. So we're not ending with kombucha. Kombucha is just the first of many microbial buddies you want to invite into your world. Um, but it's one I think that's really accessible and approachable, but there's definitely some confusion, like the way it's labeled on store shelves and things like that. Yeah. But back to your original question, what is a SCOBY? <laughs> so SCOBY is an acronym. It's our culture. It stands for symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. In fact, human beings could be thought of as a SCOBY, or as I like to call us, bacterio sapiens, because we all have microbes living inside on us, et cetera. I know that sounds a little creepy um, if you've been a germaphobe, but the reality is, is we live in a bacterial world. And mm -hmm. for the most part, most bacteria are good for us or are not going to have a negative impact on our bodies. It's only when sort of our terrain or our bodies end up out of balance, that then there's an opportunity for something to potentially take root that may not have our best interests in mind. 
Um, so that SCOBY is sort of our mothership. We plop it into our sweet tea. It's gonna ferment it into that delicious kombucha. It's gonna reproduce. So this is abundance in action. It's also, I think, a powerful lesson of if you give an organism what it needs to thrive, it will. And it that applies grows, to human yeah. beings as well. And, you know, I love that you point out that we really are SCOBYs in and of ourselves. Um, Liz Lipsky has a term that I absolutely love. She says, our bacteria are our pets. And if we take care of them, they take care of us. <laughs> And it's true, you know, we, we need this in order to be healthy. And I think one of the other things that you also pointed out, which is so great is, you know, there's a lot of talk and a lot of language about alkaline things. Oh, alkaline water and all these other alkaline things. And those are great. But when we think about how the body flows, yes, we do need to be more alkaline in general, but certain parts of our system, we go alkaline, acid, or sorry, acid alkaline, acid alkaline, because that's what we need in order for our body to function appropriately and supporting that digestive acid simply helps us then break down our food even better because when we have a healthy gut, we're getting more nutrition out of everything else we're putting into us. A thousand percent, that is absolutely correct. And you know, I like to think of the gut as the first brain, right? I know a lot of people call it the second brain, uh, truly, if this is out of order, so is this, and it doesn't yeah. seem to go the other way around. And so I think what's amazing about that, when we recognize that's true, is how much control we then have to start immediately healing our gut, because yeah. that's going to bring us some mental relief as well. And, you know, I used to think there was like a little pharmacy in my brain dispensing these neurochemicals. It turns out that pharmacy in, gut. Is in your gut and I it know. comes from, you know, the food, the nutrients fermented foods and different things we're putting in there. Well, and I think one of the other things too that I love so much about kombucha and kefir as well, both water kefir and um, you know other kefirs, because you can make them from- Milk kefir, mm -hmm. milk, or not dairy. Mm -hmm. Not dairy, um, is that they're such an easy way to consume things and you're getting, so you're getting your hydration factor, you're getting a nutrient dense, support at the same time, like it's just a great way to add that to your diet. I think one of the things that is really challenging sometimes is because people are not used to that. Like I've taken customers, clients on grocery tours and I show them like the apple cider vinegar with the mother in it. And they're like, oh, what is that little boogery looking thing at the bottom? I don't have to eat that, do I? I'm like, well, it'd be really good if you would, you know? Um, so this is kombucha. Typically when you buy it in a bottle or when you make it at home, you can strain it so that you don't get the mother in there. And so that can be a really good way to consume it. Now, can we talk for just a second though about flavoring it? Cause straight up is good, but there are other things that you can do to it. Absolutely. Flavoring is, so kombucha becomes a canvas, if you will. And we can color that canvas with any sort of flavor, fruit, spice, herb that we like. And what's lovely about it is because it's an acetic acid ferment like vinegar, it's gonna extract all of the nutritional value out of whatever you're infusing into it and pass that on to you in the beverage. So not only do you get a delicious beverage, but you also get all those health benefits. And so how I first was inspired for my flavors was just looking about. I had, um, you know, I had this lovely lemon tree and um, I was getting strawberries at the farmer's market. I had a little pot of thyme I was growing and that became pink lemonade, strawberry lemon thyme, which is my husband's oh, favorite nice. flavor. Um, mm -hmm. In the summer, I love to make elderflower lemon. Um, mm -hmm. I just love the elderflowers have a dry champagne-like flavor. I love elderflower liqueur. So here I can have a non-alcoholic version that I can drink right now, in fact, and, um, and be able to do my work and everything. And then in the fall, I love to do apple pie. So here I'm just taking apples are in season or pears are in season, right? Right now we're seeing them on our store shelves, grabbing those, dicing them up, cinnamon, clove, nutmeg, all those yummy warming spices that help to get the blood flowing. And you know, again, they all have their benefits. You could throw a little turmeric in there. Um, oh yeah, that would just be makes such lovely flavors. And it's so fun to play with because then you, here's what'll happen. You'll probably find a couple of flavors you love and just make those again and again. And then one day you'll be like, I need something different. 
The book has 260 flavor inspirations, but again, just looking at your farmer's market or what's at the grocery store um, in the produce section is a great way to get inspiration or what's in your garden. And I love that, that look at seasonal kombucha because we talk all the time about seasonal eating. Why are we not also seasonally drinking? Like that's fabulous. Yes, it is fabulous. And so like I'll add ice in the summer, but I often don't even put it over ice at other times of the year. And we can even warm it slightly. We don't want to warm it too hot, like to boiling, to right. get rid of any of the good guys, but we can also warm it slightly, especially when it's cool out. Sure. Well, my, my, one of my favorite flavors is um, using a little rooibos tea in the tea blend and then strawberry and basil as my mm. flavor. And it's just like, hmm, there's something great about that. There's a little natural sweetness to the rooibos. And of course it has all of those other health benefits that go with it. And then basil is just such a lovely musky, but goes so nicely with the strawberry. You can even a touch of balsamic vinegar in there. Oh, maybe. there you go. Oh no, I've got to try that. That's I know. Really great. Oh, like a little salad in your well. glass. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Well, and I love that you suggested elderflower because, um, you know, I will confess there are elderberry bushes near me and I have been known to go wading into the thicket to get them to make my own elderberry syrup, you know, for the winter. Mm -hmm. I had not thought about taking the flowers and putting them into that. So I have to make a mental note next year when they're in season, I'm going to have to go get flowers and try it because that just sounds amazing. Like, first of all, elderflowers are self effervescing. So I imagine that makes it even bubblier it and bubblier on the tongue. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then you can even take that elderberry syrup you're making and put that into your kombucha. Sure. Yeah, that would be fabulous too. And that's a great way to boost your immune system on a lot of different levels. Mm -hmm. So can you talk to us a little bit about really how literally easy this is to do? <laughs> yes. When I first discovered kombucha back in 2003, I was sad. Standard American diet. <laughs> that's what I mean by sad. I um, you know, I was eating a lot of processed foods. I was you know, out of college and sort of cooking for myself, but not really great at it. You know, so I relied more on a microwave and I did some things on the stovetop, but still plenty of ramen and, and all that kind of stuff. And the reason I mention all this is because if I could make kombucha, so can you, because really, if you can brew a cup of tea, you can brew kombucha. So all you need to know how to do is boil water. Of course, there's little tips and nuances and tricks, but the essence of making kombucha is we're literally making sweet tea. So yeah. we brew our tea, we add sugar, we can talk about that. We stir it in, we let it dissolve, we cool it down quickly with some cool water, float in our SCOBY, pour some liquid on top just to give that little extra pH protection to prevent the mold and things from growing in there, cover it up with a cloth, and we just set it away on a countertop or in a cupboard for a week or so, and then come back and taste it. And once it has the sweet sour flavor we're enjoying, we go ahead and we harvest that. We're gonna take out the mother. She will have had a daughter at that time. So we have two scobies. This is abundance in action. I love this. We take out a little bit of starter for the next batch. And then you just flavor the rest of that kombucha or drink it plain, whatever you enjoy and just repeat that process. So it has that lovely sort of process to it that you reap what you sow, benefit to it. And really the more you sort of infuse your love, what you're trying to do, I truly believe because these are living organisms. Now yeah. it's not going to crawl out of the jar and come sleep in the bed with you, but um, <laughs> it is like a cross between a pet and a plant in that if we care for it, it's going to care for us. So it definitely has those qualities to it. Well, and one of the other things that I think is really great about it is like you said, it will, every time you brew, it makes a new one. And so eventually like you can just share you know, so again, that's, that's the abundance of sharing the wealth of what you're making and, and what you're drinking. I think the other thing that I really love about it is, for example, down here, I live in Texas in the summer, man, it brews really fast. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and so you can get quite a bit of it, you know, which is, is great if you want to experiment with different flavors or whatever, you set up all your little bottles and do all kinds of things like it's really wonderful. Um, if you have a cellar, you can store some of those for winter. I don't know if mm -hmm. you guys have cellars in Texas. 
No, we have tornadoes. No, we have hurricanes more than tornadoes where I live, but no, the, so the groundwater is like, if we tried to dig a cellar, it would be a pool. It wouldn't Mm. work. (laughs) Yes. I'm from the Midwest originally, and we all had, you know, basements and cellars and whatnot, but I guess uh, (laughs) Texas is a little different. I think of it as sort of in the middle, but you're right. There's got totally different weather conditions coming at you. Um, but that said, you're right. Like it does reproduce a lot in the summer and there are other uses. So kombucha is something I like to say, snout to tail, not that it has either. (laughs) You can use all aspects of it. And that means like pets will benefit from having a little bit in their water. It's great for fermenting chicken feed. It, there are many studies have shown it's just as good, if not better than antibiotics. And of course you're not killing anything. You're um, encouraging life, but it's still allowing them to, to grow nice. Um, it also, we can take the scobies themselves, face mask, we can make facial toner out of the, the vinegar, we can take the scobies and compost them back into the ground. So the earth, especially your acid loving plants, your roses, your berries, you know, anything that makes vitamin C is going to really love having that bacterial cellulose put back into the ground. And we can even eat the scobies ourselves. We have a recipe in the book for scoby fruit leather. Again, it's insoluble fiber, so it's not digestible, but it's going to be like psyllium husk. It's going to act like a broom, sweep out excess, you know, sugars and hormones. And again, you're going to use a lot less sugar and fruit than if you're making a a traditional fruit roll up, because part of that consistency is coming from the the SCOBY. Honestly, you can't even tell it's in there. So it's a great way to get a healthy treat to the kids. And there's so much more, like the book has a ton of recipes. Yeah, the book is great. Like I've made a number of the recipes in the book and they're very simple. Like it's very easy to follow and you write very well. There's a lot of great instruction in there, a lot of great history in there as well. So it's it's really wonderful. I, I mean, I tend to refer to your book as the Bible of kombucha. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We're really honored by that description. Um, yeah, we. it's a labor of love. It's like a decade's worth of, knowledge and information squeezed into 400 pages <laughs> that's great um but yeah we we loved it and there's a great appendix with research studies and different mm-hmm. things so we wanted to make sure it wasn't just you know the fluff and fun of kombucha but also some of the more um, research-based information as well well that's great hannah thank you so much for sharing this has been really fascinating now if, if people wanted to connect with you what's the best way for them to do that Absolutely. We're on all the social media platforms at Kombucha Camp, Camp with a K. And of course, our website is kombuchacamp.com, camp camp with a K. We have a free DIY guide that you can download brewing logs. Um, You get an email a day for five days. Again, you know, the basics are are basic, but there's a lot of information. We just break it down and make it really easy for you to understand the different aspects of kombucha. So you can sign up there and grab your, your free brewing logs and DIY guide. That sounds great. So I'll put a link to that down below so that people can click on that and get, I love that you have this a free DIY guide. And, uh, you know, I think also one of the other things that's great about it is if you break it down like that, it makes it a little bit less overwhelming. Easier to digest. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Hannah, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been really wonderful. Folks, don't forget to click and subscribe down below, ring the bell so you know when we get other videos up. But in the meantime, be sure to check out Hannah and Kombucha Camp and learn all you can and start drinking this amazing healthful beverage. Thanks so much. Talk to you later. Bye.